Hi folks, welcome back to Project 65. I'm Divok, and today we have some rather juicy Guild Wars 2 news. For the longest time, I've been a primarily World vs World player in Guild Wars 2, fighting with my comrades against massive player armies vying for control, only using our skills and wits to beat the rest. Well, recently we heard of something huge coming to the game mode, which was kind of leaked by some of the devs during a stream, and it has been sorely needed. World vs World has slowly been dying, with a player base that's getting smaller and smaller, and patches upon patches that just aren't quite hitting the mark, so we desperately needed a breath of fresh air. And we're certainly getting that, in a way. In a crazy turn of events that maybe one person asked for, World vs World is getting mounts. Or at least, a mount. The Warclaw is the new Guild Wars 2 World vs World mount, dropping on February 26th. Before I go into my thoughts about this, let me quickly go over the mount itself so you guys can have a bit of perspective on what it's actually going to do. It certainly looks like one hell of a beast, and it will be impressive from a stylistic standpoint, and it seems to have a pretty average movement speed for mounts. Nothing too crazy, but certainly quicker than swiftness, and it comes with three skills. The first skill sounds like the first skill of any mount. It's a dismount attack that comes with the mount as soon as you have it unlocked. In PvE, dismount attacks aren't the be-all and end-all of a mount, but in World v World, Entering combat is a huge deal, and even more importantly is landing control abilities, or CC, on the engage. And the current mounts do a lot of CC during their big first hard hitting attack when you dismount on them. So if that comes across with this Warclaw in World v World as well, you can guarantee that if you don't engage with these beasts, you're going to be at a severe disadvantage. And that is one thing no one wants. Not only because we don't necessarily want mounted engagements, but also because this is going to tie everything to must-have Path of Fire. It's already pretty much like that in World vs World, but you can get by if you're an incredibly skilled player and just following around a big sort of public blob. But if you have to have a mount to engage, that's just going to further divide the player base, and that is the last thing we needed. We needed more players, not fewer. The second skill is called Chain Pull, and it seems to be an ability that will help you take down a gate. Now, you only need two people to build a ram, which can quite effectively take down a gate, so I can't imagine this being all too effective. You latch your mount to the gate that you're attacking, and presumably do damage to it. More damage than an auto-attack, and we can only hope it does less than siege damage. While this sounds interesting, I guess, it fills a void that no one was really asking for. They tried this once before, with the Charkar. I forget what it's really called, we just call it the Charkar. You used to be able to build it as a scribe, I believe, and you could roam around in this little car that would do mild damage to towers. It was only ever used as sort of a meme -y thing, I don't really know that many people that ran around taking towers with this, but I guess a mount is far more accessible so you might see this happen more often. It makes small groups able to take towers, but largely people play in bigger groups in World v World these days, and other than an entire group instead of just auto attacking a gate, getting on their mounts and using this ability, I don't necessarily see where this ability comes into play. The third and final ability is Evade. It grants a boost to your speed, and, well, it evades. Yes, this will certainly help you push into the enemy without taking damage, but more importantly, it will keep your pursuers, when you're roaming around as an individual, out of combat as they catch up to you on their shiny new mounts and take you out 5 on 1. Because they'll be able to evade and not take damage, not get into combat, they'll be able to catch up to you far, far quicker. You will probably already be in combat or trying to evade yourself, but they will inevitably catch you and beat you with their horrible roaming Condi Mesma builds. That's a bit of a negative standpoint on it, I must admit, but it's kind of the first one that comes to mind. Being able to chase down is already quite a big problem with certain classes, and it makes roaming on those other classes a little harder. So I guess the mounts are there to make this a bit more even, but once you're off the mount and you're both in combat, it's still going to go one way. In terms of its more wider application, this mixed with the ability to potentially CC when jumping off the mount, you could just run at the enemy, evade, get to their backline, and then attack. If the enemy backline melts from your mounted attack with your Path of Fire shiny mount, then they're not going to have any damage and you're just instantly going to win. Of course, this is all entirely speculation, but it's food for thought. So, that is the Warclaw. 
a Guild Wars 2 World vs World mount. But what does the community think? Well, there has been a bit of a backlash. The biggest backlash is that this was the big change. We definitely needed more. As I alluded to, this was kind of spoiled to us earlier on in the week, maybe even earlier on in the month, that we were going to be getting a big change coming to World vs World. It wasn't the big change that we've been promised for a long time, where we're getting this new awesome alliance system that many of us are waiting for to kind of revive the whole World vs World thing. No, no, we, we weren't getting that, and we were told that. And while they are still working on that, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they are, that's kind of like the big change we've all been looking forward to. So to say, you're getting a big change, but it's not that, we were kind of waiting for, well, let's be honest, we weren't waiting for, we were hoping for something really good. This wasn't necessarily it. Mounts aren't necessarily going to save the world versus world community. It might be fun for a little while, we'll certainly see a lot more queues as all the PvEers come in to try and get them new mounts, but that's not going to force the PvEers to stay here. Just like forcing them to do world v world in order to get their legendaries isn't going to make them stay. You need to make the game mode better, not just force people from other game modes to come into this game mode for 5 minutes just to do one quick thing. That's not going to help them stay in this game mode. So we need some honest improvements. And I know it's the worst thing in the world to preach about you want this and you want that without giving any sort of suggestions of your own, but I'm not necessarily the best in terms of a game dev. I'm not remotely qualified. I report on things, I'm a content creator, if I had really good ideas about game development I'd go and do that instead. Anyway, moving on from the biggest elephant in the room, which is that we just need Guild Wars 2 World v World to be fixed, what else has the community thought about this? Well. As I kind of alluded to during the main segment, the mount skills could and will be abused. The ArenaNet team might think they've thought of all of the possibilities and they've patched it in a certain way that you won't be able to abuse it from this, that and the other, but all the things I've just discussed here are things I've come off the top of my head right now. With a bit more thought, I'm sure people can come up with some crazy things that they can do with these mounts. And yes, some of it will be crazy cool, but some of it will also be crazy abusive and it will make the game a lot harder to play for certain people. So keep an eye out for that and keep an eye on the Reddit because as soon as people come up with these stupid ideas, there should be at least one or two people trying to help fix them. So for all of that, am I particularly worried? Not really. Me and my guild were getting more and more increasingly worried as soon as we saw this news get leaked. In fact, I'll show you a shot from our Discord, I'll blur out lots of it. Basically, it's everyone being like, why mounts? Why is this happening? People even talking about, are there other Realm vs. Realm games out there that we could start playing? Like, there was a backlash for sure. But someone said one quite important thing that I'm going to hold on to and just hope that that's the case. Maybe this is just like gliding. For any of you World v. World players out there, you know we got gliding recently, or recently-ish, in terms of the World v. World life cycle, and it didn't really change everything. Yeah, sure, you notice when you don't have it, it makes it a bit harder to travel between certain places, but that's it. It doesn't really give you any sort of crazy advantage in combat, and I can really hope that that's what mounts are going to be like. Now, like I said before, they could be abused, but we thought that about gliding as well, and everything was proven wrong. So maybe, just maybe, this is going to be fine. Of course, there are other good things coming on the 26th of February. The World v World meta might be mixed up with a balance patch. It's been sale for quite a long time, and a very long time, so we're really hoping this balance patch mixes things up a bit. At the moment, most classes are playable, but just the general playstyle feels a bit stale. It's time to shake things up. Personally, I'd love to see us go back to a melee meta, where you've got scrappers and reapers and basically bring back the Heart of Thorns meta, but that's just my personal preference. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, comment and subscribe, as it really does help the channel out. I've been Divok of Project 65, and I will see you next time.